here we go. Cue the royalty free dad rock. <laughs> Hey there folks, Chuck here. Thanks for joining me on this little journey through creativity and restoration as I work through the giant pile of diecast cars that is the representation of the stressful last few months I've had and the coping mechanism that I came up with, which was to buy hundreds of tiny cars and pile them up in a cabinet. So I'm working my way through that and I'm working my way through a bunch of other stuff and uh, I welcome you to join me for the ride as we work our way through this giant pile of cars and try to make something creative with the madness that has been the last few months of my life. Someday I might tell you a little bit more about why I suddenly bought hundreds of tiny cars, but uh, we don't know each other that well yet. So we'll get around to that later. The first car that I wanted to build was to... Uh, create the embodiment of the Copperhead Road moonshine running car from the Steve Earle song of the same name from 1988. A converted Johnson County Sheriff patrol car that has been converted into a moonshine running machine. It's a song I really enjoy. It's got that really awesome uh, drum drop at the beginning. Uh, it's one of the better drum drops in music recording, in my humble opinion. I would like to recreate that for you now but I can't because I would like to make more than one video. So I'm not going to give you the drum drop from Copperhead Road. So instead, I'm going to give you this royalty free sound effect that I found that is sort of like that drop. Okay, that was disappointing and moving on. So we're going to dive right in here on the first car, which is the uh, 1959 Dodge Cornette by Matchbox. I always thought that the 1959 Dodge Coronet would be a perfect vehicle because it has those lovely snake-like eyebrows. Now I like to do a little research on my cars before I get started, and the beauty of American cars from 1920 to 1980 is I have a little book that can help me with getting some of the finer details on these particular models, and I like to call it the Book of Tad. Tad Burness's amazing book is a thousand pages, 10,000 illustrations, and a hefty five pounds. Look at it. Look at that majesty. That is a book. So many hand cut out, handwritten notes. There wasn't too much in this book on the 59 Coronet specifically, but it had some really cool uh, illustrations and a few factoids. But there's also this thing called Google, and since I'm building a moonshine car, I wanted to research the look of moonshine cars. This was a great article. I also looked at Tennessee County Sheriffs. As you all know, the car is based on a Johnson County Sheriff police car. So, that in mind, let's boogie. I'm not going to go into too much details about drilling and tapping. I think that's been covered really well by uh, other builders and I'm not gonna steal their thunder. This was my initial stripping agent. I was a quick strip that I got from the local hardware store. I let it sit and sit and sit and sit and was not really pleased with the progress. So I've found other ways to do it quicker and you'll see those in future builds. Wire brush the last of the paint off and then it was time to drop some acid, phosphoric acid that is, and I'm going to leave a link to the video that I learned how to do this from. It's amazing what you can learn on YouTube. It's a really cool way to polish your vehicles quickly and get them ready for paint. It's messy and a little dangerous, but man, does it really cut down on the polishing time. It does leave a little bit of a residue though, so a few seconds on a buffing wheel, which you would have had to do anyway with polishing your casting. And you're ready to go into the Sonic Cleaner with a little hot water and a little mean green. I like to have my vehicles take group baths, it saves water. Then it was time to patch that hole in the roof. So I used a little duct tape and some putty. Wasn't really thrilled with how that turned out, so I used some Gorilla Glue Super Glue, uh, the gel version, and that did a good job of firming everything up. Took a burr tool on the Dremel and made some dents in the body to make it look like this thing had seen a thing or two in the backwoods of Tennessee. Quick shot of Tamiya White. 
I wanted to start off with a mock-up of what the Johnson County Sheriff vehicle would have looked like before the Moonshiners got a hold of it. I sponged on some copper paint as a nod to the title of the song, of course. I've seen police liveries that were kind of a copper color with a white roof, and I really like that look. I decided that I would just dab on the paint since it's really not essential that it be applied perfectly. I probably should have done it with an airbrush, but craft paint and me and airbrushes is not a great combination yet. I used some oven cleaner to strip off the chrome. Uh, railroad tie brown for the chassis. I try to avoid solid blacks whenever possible. They just don't seem natural, especially on vehicles this small. Once the paint had dried, I went over it all with a quick shot of primer. It's not really primer, it's just like a charcoal gray that I mixed up from some Vallejo paints and tried to make it look as thin and as amateurly applied as possible. Somebody applied this primer outside in a hurry, no prep, no washing the car first, just barely cover the paint underneath it and show signs of wearing through on any surface that had any oil or any uh, particulates so you know especially along the thin areas like the fender tips and along the top of the doors the hood to uh, the top of the fenders to show a little bit of that copper paint below and I think it turned out pretty good just like the song says just a shot coat of primer and he looked inside uh, a lot of these shine runners like to have their cars be a matte finish so they would blend in in the dark and not be picked up by the uh, revenuers as they were looking to bust these moonshine runners. I use these scratching tools. I used the nylon brush to rub through some of the quote primer that I had airbrushed on and give it a scratched and scraped appearance so you could see some of the copper through the paint. A lot of people on weathered vehicles tend to dull their chrome a bit too much. I like the Molotov chrome pens because they give you a good scale chrome. It's not too shiny but it's still shiny enough to look like what a weathered bumper would be. If you really look at chrome bumpers, even on cars that are 60, 70, 80 years old, that chrome holds up pretty well in spots. I'm a big fan of this Citadel Typhus Corrosion. Uh, it really does a good job of uh, simulating chipped paint and steel that's kind of discolored and you go over it in a few places with some Ryza Rust, also by Citadel, and that does a really good job of bringing out the color of rust and the grittiness of the Typhus Corrosion does a really good job of soaking up that orange paint, uh, the Ryza Orange. It's almost more of a paste than a paint, uh, but it's really fun to work with. I really like these uh, Tamiya Weathering Powders, the Steel and Rust really do a good job of bringing out the little details on these chassis. although. Most of this ended up covered with the mud weathering powders, and I'm okay with that. It was good practice. This one, I really wanted the car to look like it had been running through a bunch of dirt roads and stuff. Uh, these are some old weathering powders that I use in my 124th scale days, and they do a great job of simulating dirt and grime. I'm really happy with being able to use these again because they were very expensive. They're probably at least 15 or 16 years old. Uh, in fact, a lot of the paint that I use in this build uh, is on the older side. The tarnished black, the tester's stoplight red, those are all at least uh, over a decade old. Uh, I was amazed that when I got these out of storage, I was able to use any of them, but about half of them still had some life left in them and with a little thinner came back to life pretty quickly. The acrylics did a really good job. Like They basically needed nothing to be usable again. Here you can see I added a little of that Rise of Rust orange, and it really helped the uh, rusty areas pop. And I'm going over those snake-like eyebrows with the chrome pen, and uh, I really like these pens, but the uh, one millimeter here, uh, you can see it dripped there, and that almost ruined my day. I was uh, fortunate I was able to save it and then use that little puddle of chrome to to touch up the side trim. I'm not super thrilled with how this turned out, but uh, I'm working on getting my steady hand back and uh, hopefully that will improve as I continue to build. The front was a lot easier. It was a much more raised edge. I might look at other ways of doing the chrome trim, but it worked out well for this because there's so much weathering on the car that the shakiness was pretty easy to cover. In a few spots with copper and a few spots with tarnished black paint to cover up my chrome sins. A little dab of oyster white paint on top of the chrome to simulate headlights and some good old tester's stoplight red on the back for the taillights. This uh, oyster white 
Warcraft paint is a favorite of mine for uh, details like the roof and the headlights. Uh, it does a really nice off-white without being too obviously not white. It's just got this slight offness to it. I try to, again, avoid uh, solid white as much as I avoid solid black. The black wash and brown wash that I use is based on a recipe that I found from a really great YouTube channel called Black Magic Craft. I will link to that video in the description below. Uh, be sure to give him a subscribe and hey, while you're at it, why don't you give me a subscribe too? That would be lovely. I like to use the brown wash almost as much as I use the black wash because uh, it does a really good job of uh, bringing out detail on brown or tan interiors. The brown wash does a really good job of making a much more subtle highlight than you get with the black wash. With most of my builds, I try to avoid using straight black as much as possible uh, just because it really doesn't show up much in nature and it really doesn't show up much with uh, weathered vehicles. Things tend to go gray or brown. I did a little chrome pen, again you can see the chrome pen is leaking, to touch up the speaker grill on the back and uh, add some stoplight red to the police lights in the back window that got left behind at the auction. Little detail on the tires to make them look like they've been running through the mud and the clay in the Tennessee mountains. I decided not to put custom wheels on this one. I thought the uh, rims that came with it were close enough to stock cop rims that with a little paint and powder they'd be fine. I got the inspiration for the windshield from Troy Grant, who has a great YouTube channel about uh, creating crashed cars of this scale. He's really great at manipulating tiny metal to make it look like big metal. And I highly recommend that after you subscribe to my channel, you go over and subscribe to his. I'll have a link to his channel and the tutorial that I used in the description below. Quick dip in the pickle jar for the window and added a little weathering powders to make it look like there was some road grime on the glass. I'm really happy with how it turned out. The pledge does an amazing job of taking plastic and making it look like glass. So I tend to do it even if I'm going to have a lot of fogging or a lot of dust and debris on my windshields or glass just because the parts that you do see it really does make it look like glass. A quick caliper measurement and it was off to Photoshop to make the graphics. I didn't go too crazy here because I knew that the graphics are really tiny. You can see that even at 300 dpi the images were quite pixelated and print out some inkjet decals. A little warm water, a little Microsol decal bonder. Uh, Microsol setting agent really does wonders with making the decals blend with the curves of the surface that you're working with and really make it look like it's painted on. I mean, it's not a miracle worker, but you know, you put your decals on and you give it a quick shot of satin varnish and it blends in quite well. I took a little tarnished black and applied it over the top to cover up most of the decals and then went back over it with a wet paintbrush to let some of it show through. I probably should have let more of it show through, but I'm still pretty happy with how it turned out. After a quick coat of matte varnish from Vallejo, I went back over the chrome and gave it a few bright spots. I used the Gundam marker to mark out the panel lines. I'm really happy with that as a little detail tool. I prefer the brown marker on these weathered builds because it really kind of highlights the dustiness, especially on a dark color like this charcoal gray that the primer ended up turning out. I then went over the headlights with a little gloss varnish to help them pop a little bit, catch the light like the glass would. Time to put those little button head screws on. I finally go around with the muddy red to bring all of the dusting together and it was time for adding my little signature decal to the bottom and vehicle 001 was ready to go. So this is what we started with, Matchbox 100 series. And here's what we ended up with. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it does the song a good service. I'm really pleased with the uh, weathering process. I'm trying to be a little more subtle with my weathering. And uh, I think I still have ways to go, but this was a good start. The Copperhead Road Moonshine Running Dodge is probably my favorite automotive song reference. Um, there's a lot of great songs about cars. Do you have one? Let me know your favorite car song or your favorite car mentioned in a song, whether it's a little red Corvette, a little Deuce Coupe, or some other little car. Maybe it's a big car. 
So there we go. First episode in the can. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm very new at this, so uh, any feedback would be very helpful. Feel free to punch all the buttons that are below this video if you're so inclined. They don't do much, but they do make me happy. So if you want to make me happy, punch a bunch of buttons. That's fun to say. Punch a bunch of buttons. I appreciate you coming along with me for the ride, and until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags. Cheese bags.